Got another question on the aromatic chemistry topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to do it first. Okay so part A, I've started the diagram off but I just wanted to talk through um, to explain the difference. So we've got our six carbon atoms joined together by sigma bonds in both situations. Obviously there's hydrogens there as well but we don't show them. We've got uh, a p orbital on each carbon of the ring. So remember A was sort of the Kekulé structure so what's going on in terms of orbital overlap well, if we start here, so these, this pair of p orbitals overlaps, then we miss out uh, a bond, and then we go to here, they overlap, and then they overlap. And obviously that's going to generate a double bond here, single bond there, double bond here, and so on. In B, which has the sort of circle around the middle, what happens is all of the p orbitals all overlap with each other. So we don't get the sort of skipping of p orbitals like we had in A, we get that. So how would we describe that? So in A, three alternating pairs of p orbitals form three localised pi bonds. And that's going to give you that situation. Whereas in B, all six pairs of p orbitals overlap to form a delocalised ring of pi electrons, which gives us that. Next part, obviously we know the answer is B because we're familiar with that delocalized structure for benzene as opposed to the Kekulé structure. But how do we use this information to sort of show it? So all I'm saying is if A was correct, then the enthalpy change of hydrogenation for benzene would be three times that value. So it would be minus 357 kilojoules per mole. But we know that the actual value, which we've got here, is less than that. It's only minus 208 so because of that, A can't be right. Next part, sort of unfamiliar mechanism this. So we've got to go from this through step one to this situation here. So you can see what's happened. We've lost the uh, two ends. So they've become an N2 molecule. So what's happened here is a pair of electrons must have gone from there onto that N plus Obviously, it's broken that bond by heterolytic fission. It's going to leave a positive charge on here. And then step two, we need to go from this to this. Obviously, we've formed a covalent bond between the fluorine and the carbon. So how's that happened? A pair of electrons from the F minus ion obviously go to that positive carbon and form that covalent bond. There's the equation for the generation of the electrophile. Obviously, that's the thing that's going to react with benzene to give that. So you can see the FeBr3 there is carrying the bromine. So that's why they're called halogen carrier catalysts. So moving on to this flow chart now. So we've got to come up with the structures for compounds A and B involved in the synthesis. So how do we get uh, this sort of alkyl group with the amino group 1? How do we get that? onto this part of the benzene ring. Well, we just need halogens at the end of here and here. So that would be the answer for A. And going back to the flow chart, how could we get this onto here? Well, there's a couple of options. You could either go for sort of a carboxylic acid group at the end here, or you could go for an acyl chloride group. So either of those are perfectly acceptable. And the final part of the question, this the percentage yield question. So we've got to make 1.73 grams of D. Um, the percentage yield for the process is 40%. Um, what mass of 1,3-diaminobenzene is needed for the synthesis? So the first thing I've done is just worked out how many moles of D have been made. Mass over MR, so we get that. How many moles of this 1,3-diaminobenzene, just calling it 1,3-dab for short, how many moles would be needed, but we've got a factor in it's only a 40% yield. So if we divide the moles by 40, but multiply it by 100, we'll scale it up to how much we're going to need. And then all we need to do is convert it to grams by multiplying by the MR of this 1,3-diaminobenzene, which is 108, and we get 1.35 grams.